now I hit record. <laughs> didn't... Start up strong. Start up strong was the first words I said, and I didn't even hit record. <laughs> oh, welcome back to the Tubi Podcast, the standard of which something else is going to go wrong when you think it's going to go right. I am your host, James. This is your TV movie entertainment needs podcast. And sitting with me, as always, is my co-host, Colin. How you doing? And sitting with us, as always, is Cameron. How you doing, bud? I'm alive. I'm here. I'm, I made some good money last night. We 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 out here. Mm-hmm. All right, moonlighting. I see. Okay. All right. Cool. 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 cool Cameron. Prostitution. Yep. I just get a. Uh, As Donna Summers once said, "Working hard for the money." Which I, I twenty five dollars. <laughs> Let's get into it. So, as you guys know, we've been prepping for this one for a while. We have been binging two shows back to back in preparation for kind of like I'd say a deep dive into the series. Is that what you want to call it? Breakdown? Uh, I guess not really a breakdown. We're like kind of just, it's more of like a review you know, talking about it, review. Yeah, review. So, yeah. we're going to be kind of do, we have a few of these lined up for this season at least. I know the next one we have coming up. Uh, we're starting very, very soon is Colin's pick, which was the Spectacular Spider-Man. Spectacular Spider-Man. Which I was going to watch on Disney Plus and they took it off, but we'll get into they brought that. Back. They No, no, they did not. Did they really? They brought it back. I no believe. kidding. All right. Well, then never mind. But uh, for this one, we're going to be talking about Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra. So I say we kick it off with Avatar, the one that we kind of all grew up with. I feel like that's a pretty solid bit of our childhood in 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 like like digital form just because on how well it came out how long it was out for and just the overall impact kind of like nickelodeon had from this show so do you do you guys remember the like like do you guys remember growing up watching the show or were you just kind of like catching it a little late yeah i remember watching it on nicktoons um <sighs> and uh i mean it was either on in the background or like i just had to catch an episode whenever it was available hmm. um i think the moment that it really stuck with me that, you know, I kind of liked Avatar as a kid was when Aang got lightning bolt bolted in the back and mm-hmm. was in a coma, but grew out his hair. That was sort of the moment where I was like, oh, this is getting serious. You know, we're, we're kind of going in like, you know, this isn't this isn't your grandpa's Avatar. Like this is the same you know, M. Night Shyamalan Avatar. This is the real deal. Oh, God, I forgot I that Existed. I can't I can't believe that that the studio saw that movie and they went, yeah, go for it. Put it out that that's going to perfectly match up with our tone. You know, in this day and age of like, uh, you know, studios, you know, not letting creators do whatever they wanted. They let M. Night Shyamalan do whatever he wanted with that movie. That was that's why I've never I... seen more boring bending in my life. <laughs> Remember when it took like eight guys to move one rock? That's cinema, baby. <laughs> Thank so God. bad. I remember my dad took me and at the time some friends when I was in elementary school to go see the movie. And we all were talking so much crap during the whole movie. That is, I've never been to a movie where the entire time I'm talking about it was saying like, that's wrong. Or like, doesn't look like that. Or he's not white. Like something like that. Just the entire time. My dad oh. loved the movie because he never saw the show. My friends and I were enraged. I, I didn't hate the movie because it was like not like I didn't hate it because it wasn't good for the source. But I just watching it as a kid, I just I felt like something was wrong. Yeah. Like, I felt like something was off when I was watching. I was like, this doesn't something feel right. wrong with this movie. I'd say it's probably the <laughs> the whitewashing to a thousand degrees. Ong. Oh. Ong. We could, you know, that one we'll we'll make this movie the the. It's not even called Avatar. It's just called The Last Airbender because I think it was around the same time. Wasn't Avatar yeah. like just out by that point? Yeah, James Cameron. Great. Yeah, way to go. That's the only excuse I'll give for that rename. But we got to make that a cinema showcase episode one. We just got to so we can we can really go into full detail why this movie sucked. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be our it. series finale. Go <laughs> out like a whimper. Yeah, we'll do it for the season three finale of of uh see of season three. We'll have that as our as our last cinema showcase episode. Oh, it's a good idea, not Colin. Um, not that soon. Not I've... that soon. Please give till December. No. All right. Well, so fun thing about this this show, I didn't realize during the rewatch is that the whole thing from season one to season three was was over the course of one year. So like the day they found him in the iceberg, to that very last episode was one year. Damn. 
I could have sworn it was three years for the whole thing because of each season. Right. But not. It was literally when when Avatar and Katara and the, that that balcony. She was like, it's crazy how a year ago we you were just some kid in the iceberg. I was like, excuse me? That's the only thing I don't like. I just, I, 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 I went through a lot for now. A lot of time. It's just like, it's too, for, I know that like a year is a long time, but like also like, I don't know. I just, it, when you have three seasons and it all takes place in like one year, it just doesn't it feel like it's not that enough time, you know? Well, I, I, I know. I, I get what like, you're you saying. You get what I'm saying? I do. I get it, but it's like, like I don't know a better way to explain it. Like it just no. it it just it doesn't it doesn't gel well with me. That's the only gripe because everything else is fine in that show. Okay. What what, what are you Cameron? You had something about that. I, I, I do think it's interesting whenever a story takes place less time than it took to come out. Yeah. That's the yeah. Like, you know, uh I completely different. Um, but like Ultimate Spider-Man comics as well, like from like issue one all the way to like the death of Spider-Man, like all two hundred issues, or I think at the time it was like one hundred and twelve. It took like a decade to like write all those out. You wanna yeah. know how long that comic also took? Six months. In that time span from issue one all the way blah, a year. Wow yeah so as, so like that, that's that's huh. why i don't like that's what like i don't like that stuff like because it kind of messes with your with your mental continuity of the things where you think it's like yeah. three years because that's how you know normally with each season it's like a different part of the year or something like that yeah uh, is that how you guys think that because i mean i i kind of also like there's just so much that happens in that show where it's just like i'd yeah. give them like a year or two maybe even three but like it's such a long journey for it to just be like one year. Yeah, and I get that, but I think what what that what that show did great about it is that it took that year and it really made the pressure feel like real because Aang the entire time has to master 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 the three elements he doesn't really know all that well, and especially with him having to struggle with Earth in in book two, something that's kind of the opposite of air. Then then kind of taking that time with it. To then rush through fire because they had Sozin's Comet and they had the invasion coming up. And him actually having that panic attack, like the three days leading up to the invasion, was kind of interesting. Because I think doing that thing over the course of the year shows, and and like in the story, you feel that pressure through Aang having to master all these elements. Because at 12 years old, this kid's like like 12 or 11 or something, having to like save the entire planet. Yeah. that What and were you guys doing at 11? Uh, uh, Cameron, you go first, please. Yeah, I think I was learning cursive or something. Uh, when I was eleven, um, weirdly yes. enough, I I I didn't get into this show when I was a kid. Mm. Like, I I might have seen a couple episodes here or there, but I never really got into it really until like middle school when Legend of Korra came out. Like, Legend of Korra was my first deep dive into this world and then i went back and watched avatar and i was like hmm, funky that's a unique but, way to put it for sure funky they got the weird yeah. ass animal hybrids okay. especially because i was i was so to uh cora's aesthetic mm. of like 1930s steampunk a bit more advanced and that was yeah. like more, uh, yeah i did like um and uh I, I i think because of that i i um i have a bias towards uh cora just because it was my first like experience in the world but um so cora is your favorite <sighs> yeah well it's not like we're gonna dog on you for it they're both great shows i i, I know but I, I know i know that there. it's a hot take yeah. Oh no, dude, it's on fire. Um, yeah. but that's. I I really like Cora. I don't know. It, it's it's kind of funny. I don't know. I think that like I also had a bias with uh Zack Snyder, and I never heard the end of that. So uh. Oh, we I gotta mean, get. Did, you, did, you, did you see that he's got a a profile <laughs> picture on Netflix now? Does he? You yeah. can make your profile picture on Netflix, Zachary Snyder. Oh, uh, you know what's funny is like James knows this, but like my mom's an alcoholic 
and like we never changed her Netflix profile icon from a glass of wine. <laughs> and it's always been there. <laughs> I knew the first half, not the second half. Uh no. Picture. Oh, is that the picture? That's the picture. It's like a school uh, year. It looks like it's like senior portrait. I love it. Yeah. It's so good. All right. So uh as we all know, there are the four elements. There's earth fire water and air i know i know it's not not earth wind water fire but uh elements but you know well those are the main four that kind of inspire all these things let me let me ask you this which one you guys rocking with blood so water blood no just blood it's so called just blood, blood bending. i know it's a it's a subclass of water bending i know but it's like mm-hmm. when you say yeah, water bending blood. no one's gonna think of blood bending you have to differentiate it it's Everyone's like going to think order, of blood bending like when, when you say water bending. A, it's like when you're ordering between a water and a and ice a, water. A, like, shut the up and let me talk. It's like when you order a water and sparkling water. It's like you're not going to say water and they're going to give you sparkling water and know what the fuck you're talking about. No, say I, blood. I get that, but you can't just, you can't have one without the other. I know you can't have I one without the other. Huh? I said, no. It's it. If you only bend blood, then you're a blood bender. As long as you just don't touch water. Sure. Sure. Okay. All right. So blood bending. Took only like nine years to agree on that point. Okay. All right. Well. Well, then I guess in my case, I'm gonna go metal bending. Then hell yeah. Fucking Earth Kingdom, bro. Ooh no! I'm 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 gonna be that guy who uh that 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 lady from Korra who's just got water arms. Yeah, I also didn't realize that that chick didn't have actual arms. That's why she had the water arms. I didn't realize that. Or, never mind, the guy from Zaheer's army who could bend lava and then just at the end just was like got so mad that he just ended up killing himself. Yeah, dude, that we'll get to Zaheer in a little bit because that guy was that real guy quick. Was right? And before we actually dive into like, I do want to get, I want to like ask this question before we move on. Yeah. Um, I already know what my answer is, but like favorite episode out of the first Avatar series, like one that sticks out to you either from childhood or a rewatch. The Blind Bandit. That is the uh, first. That is season two, I believe, episode six. That is the introduction of Toph, the best character in the Avatar series, but mainly because the interaction between the boulder and everybody else. That's pretty much the exact because, of course, they were inspiring that off Dwayne Johnson's WWE persona. So, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. The rock, the boulder. I do remember being deeply disturbed by the bloodbending episode when I was a kid. So uh, one. I also remember yeah. Sozin's Comet episode. I remember watching that on my bed. I had like a, I had like an old static TV in my room, like the one where you, where you put your hand to it and the hair sticks up. I remember watching it on Can my I give bed. You cancer? Yeah. You cancer? I remember just, yeah, dude, I got everything from that TV. And <laughs> I think I had COVID before COVID came out from that TV. And uh, I remember sitting on my bed watching Sozin's comment and seeing Aang grab uh, Fire Lord Ozai by the freaking chin beard and just turn him blue. Like, dude, th- that that uh, part was so crazy when he just got bong. Oh, it was yeah. weird. It was so weird. And like, I, I remember sick. being so confused as a kid. I'm like, so he's blue now? Like, I never got it. Like, I didn't understand the the symbolism of it all until I like, rewatched it when I was older. That's still it's so cool. Colin, what's your is that your favorite then the bloodbending episode? It has to be bloodbending because as a kid, like, I, I mean, we all watched it as a kid, but well, not all. Cameron, you did, right? I I, I was a tween. You were a tween. His first was Cora. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You were. You were. And um, I mean, it just was like, um, I'm I'm terrible with names. Uh, Tara? Katara? Katara. Like, her, like, entire, like, dude, that was a horrifying, like, in the field, and, like, just, like, her literally, like, a tear coming down her eye as, like, she, like, her, like, she's being, like, puppeteered, you know, it just, it really was a grim, like, stuff you don't see in, like, regular cartoons that are being made nowadays. No, that was wild. And then I think it was that same episode, she actually went and found, or she supposedly thought she found the guard that killed her mom. And like stopped the rain entirely. Can yeah, that? that was. I think uh, it was the same episode. That was a wild no, no, was, episode. I, was it? I can't remember. No, dude. it was a different. No, it was a different episode. 
No, no, it was a different one because that was the episode where her and Zuko snuck out before the invasion and she wanted to try and find the guy. It yeah, was later yeah. on, though, after she learned the bloodbending. Yeah. She I'm was still she, wild. She became a badass. Like, Dude. I I had a, as a kid, I had a hard time, like, kind of keeping track with my crushes because it went from Toph to her. Toph. And, like, it's yeah dude i love top dude like she was like she's a blind dude, earth she's fan. so cool like anybody who's blind but is more capable than the rest of the group immediately has my respect and i know i'm safe well because i know that's why you love daredevil so i guess it was the same thing no it wasn't that's completely blind weird. and is better than everybody else in the group blind but i didn't have a crush on daredevil world. We know you have a crush on Daredevil, Colin. It's okay to admit it. Who doesn't? Literally yeah. the opposite of what I you just said. I have a crush on Daredevil. Matt Murdock. I no, Zaddy, like with dude. Daredevil, I don't see. I'd see him as like a friend that like Dare I'd daddy. hang out with, or a daddy, or a dare daddy. Yeah, he's dare daddy, but it's not the same kind of father figure for both of us. Uh, Cameron, I'm favorite I'm character with... from the from Avatar, not Korra. Brother, um, probably Zuko. Yeah, yeah, he's rad. Yeah. Wait, he crush? Up eye. No, no, no. I said his favorite character, not his crush. Oh. No. I was like Zuko, oh, dude. Yeah. You yeah. sound like a Tumblr girl. Talk about daddy issues. Yeah. yeah. For daddy issues, it goes Colin and then Zuko. Sorry. Zuko has the best character arc in that entire series. Yeah, easily. The best. Like God, he, be easily. he became easily the most hated to the most liked. You know, and all it took was like a couple episodes, and it thankfully because of his uncle, I don't think I would have have liked him a little bit. Oh more. my gosh, why haven't we talked about the goat to the dragon of the west, Uncle freaking dude, Iroh? Him like doing push ups in that prison, and dude, you just see jacked he's the getting. one armed pull ups, dude. Oh Every time that I was... watch that episode, I look at myself in the mirror and go, "You got to do better." Like I just, I it's. I can't, like, I can't. That dude, talk about motivation, dude. Yeah, you know, he's easily my favorite war criminal. I know everyone likes. Everyone forgets he he did commit. I don't know. Captain America seemed to be a pretty good war criminal too. He's 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 pretty good at. Like they really dodged (laughs) the circles there when it comes to it. Well, so on. Let me go down the character roster because I think I feel like if if everyone's listening to this and they're not uh, accustomed to this TV show, I'm gonna break it down for real. So main character is Avatar Aang. He is the current Avatar after Avatar Roku. He's an Earth Nomad. Technically, he's 112 years old. Uh, and then we have Appa and Momo, the cutest couple pair of animals, which is a flying lemur and a flying bison. I can't because I know that in the show they have like hybrid animals. So Momo is a lemur and a bat. And then Appa is what? A bison and a dragon? Bison and a dragon. I, well, I don't know. I'm trying to feel like this because f- he's these scales. Colin, how does he fly? Because I know I know he's an air Birds fighter. Birds don't have scales. <laughs> he doesn't have wings, Colin. He uses his tail to fly. Because I know he I is one of the don't know where okay. you got dragon. Okay, Colin, look, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna get to say because I know he's I know he's one of the original animals to to master the element, which is flying, which is then the sky bisons, which is why the air nomads have used him for travel, and that's why they have the- significance. We're gonna get to that in a second. Then we have Katar, who we've been talking about a little bit. She is from the Southern Water Tribe with her brother Sokka, who is her brother. Like I think I just said that. Toph, the blind bandit, pearl bender of the Earth Kingdom, daughter of the Bay Fong family, the richest family in Goyang. So, bam, that's my girl. Then we have Suki, leader of the Kyoshi Warriors. Super actually excited to see those in live action, which then leads us to Zuko, prince of the Fire Lord Ozai, banished member of the Fire Nation. Seriously, Super cool character. Then we have the greatest Uncle Iroh. Huh? You, you said Suki, and I was like, hell yeah, hot. And then you Dude. said Zuko, and I was like, different kind of hot. Absolutely. I think I think actually my first, Fire. I think my first like cartoon crush is that a thing was Suki, like TV sure. crush, like TV character. Right. Crush. Impossible was man. I saw her more as a friend. I, 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 I couldn't. Who's that? Who's that green chick? She go. She go. Yes. There you go. I can right. fix her. I could. I, I really could have been five years old. I could let her fix me. The ultimate gift. She's perfect. And change your mind. You guys know that was John DiMaggio as the as the blue guy. Oh, I thought you were about to say John DiMaggio as Shigo. <laughs> or Shigo, whatever the f- name is. <laughs> That's rage. 
That would be deeply, deeply upsetting. God, could you imagine? That, Jake that the dog was fun. your first crush. Bender. Uh, and then we have Azula, which is the sister to Zuko, and then her gang, which is Tylee, May, and uh I think she worked with June for a little bit, but June really wasn't with her, which was the bounty hunter from uh that that, that one episode where he had to look for Hey Bay Hey Bye. And then we have Fire Lord Ozai, the big bad of the entire show, which is voiced by Mark Hamill. I don't know if you guys knew that. I did not, but that's cool. It's Luke Skywalker. Yeah, it's that Joker from like five on projects. Sky. Yeah. The Joker, baby. The Joker. The See, Joker, I, I, th- baby. I think what what they did best in this show is <clears throat> is that they were ma- they managed to balance out every single one of these characters perfectly and each have their own story to to from start to finish. Like they didn't leave any one person out that wasn't important to the show and i like that because that beach episode with tylee may zuko <clears throat> and azula was really cool to see kind of the beginning of zuko's progression from villain to hero and i think without that episode it would have been really hard to kind of support zuko as he becomes a hero in the end and dante basco what a voice actor very very Wait, the guy who plays zuko yeah, Dante Basco is the voice actor. Yeah, he's I actually met him at a Comic Con. Oh shit! Yeah, he held my Thor's hammer, which is oh, it was red. I got a photo of it. It was really cool. Did nice he guy. voice Thor? No, I was just dressed oh. as Fat Thor, and he's like, "Cool." I'm like, "You want to hold it?" And he's like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> Simple as that. So fun, fun fact, random fun fact. Um, I oh, follow right. this sketch group on youtube their names are chris and jack and they're pretty cool and they're very very funny but i i started following them and then uh about a year after i subscribed to them i found out that jack one of the member the two members of this sketch group played soccer um and they actually have one of their uh one of their best sketches features dante basco as like this james bond type dude i'll, I'll send cool. it to you it's really good nice that sounds cool that sounds cool dude yeah That's those guys are kind of worked out where you're like oh you're the guy <laughs> you're the guy because <clears throat> i don't know if also you guys know this may whitman who voices katara was also uh, roxanne roxy richter richter from uh, sky pilgrim She's in a ton of stuff. Oh, she's in a ton of stuff. But that's like the main one that that was like the first thing I saw. I saw Katara. Ah, Roxy? Uh the the girl. The girl. The, the girl in Scott. The only other girl with Ramona. She was the four the, evil X. Fifth the evil lesbian? X. Yes. Yes. Okay, okay. No, she's the fifth evil X. Yeah, fifth evil X. Cool. She was she was the half ninja. I know, I know. I did uh, you buried the lead with lesbian. The only sorry. lesbian. Is- okay, sorry. That's all I needed to know. Okay, my bad. Yeah, so, but <clears throat> Mae Whitman, who has done a ton of stuff, mainly the one I, I, I know her as is Katara in, in uh, uh, Scott Pilgrim, which is awesome. And then, of course, we have, you know, D. Bradley Baker, who's done every clone ever. He did uh, Squilliam Fancyson, Appa and Momo, Perry the Platypus. This man has, if, he, if you see a TV show or movie, he's in it. That's the thing. This man is everywhere. It was also the big head animals? in Legend of the Temple. Does he only do animals? <laughs> Mainly. He actually, he did eagerly in uh, Peacemaker. That's cool. incredible. Dude, this man. The role of a lifetime. This man has done, the man's voice you know from around the world, but not know his name. That's he so sad. He disappeared in that role. I thought it was an actual bird. <laughs> it shows up in like a bird costume for the for the booth. Method actors. Can't so stand them. Yeah, and dude, he, his, uh, his, his way the, of how he gets into the voices of the characters it's actually really neat I'm, I, he did a he did a, like a little behind the scenes out that's kind of cool sorry <clears throat> well, i don't know what's going on with me uh mm-hmm. what i do like about the show as well is that they they not only focus on the characters but focus on the lore of the show whether it be all the past avatars or even the animals which is kind of something i wanted to piggyback off when we talk about the, the sky bisons so the sky bisons were the original airbenders which is why they have the importance in the air nomads and the air tribes but the other remaining three have actually kind of cool ones. So the dragons, of course, were the firebenders, which is why that one episode where you see Aang and Zuko trying to look for the dragon egg, they learn like the, the dragon dance. And that was also kind of a cool pivotal moment because in that moment, 
Zuko has a you know a big change because that's when he realizes fighting with anger and fighting with actual purpose is more important. And I I saw this on TikTok yesterday where throughout the entire season up until that moment, you hear him like every time he does a fire bend, like these loud grunts, like almost like he's boxing. But after that moment, he's silent because in the past he used to have to draw from his anger to use his fire bending. But that since that moment on, he actually just uses the the true meaning of fire, which is when he learns at the dragon dance, which is kind of cool to see that subtle change. And as well as when he's on the run from when he was a general, he's his body goes into like atrophy because he's not training as much. He's not eating as much. So his body kind of dwindled down. It's a pretty good television show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they don't really make them like they used to, man. Yeah. It's it's and then uh, for the... hopefully they will because they got the whole studio now. Yeah, I'm going to get into that in, in a second. So then for the Earthbenders, it was the Badger Moles, things that were blind and had to use the Seismic Sense, which was another subclass of Earthbending. Now, and then, uh, and then of course, we have the Koi Fish, which is what we saw at the end of Season 1, uh, that were the uh, Yin and Yang Fish. They, it's called uh, the Moon Spirit and then the uh, the Ocean. So it's the Water, which is the, uh, the duo Tai and La, which is kind of cool, which is what general zhao was trying to kill the fish moon lady the fish moon lady that is very different that is oh crap what's her name because i know amber mid thunder from from prey is playing her crap what's that group? Pretty well. ua <laughs> ua princess ua oh. that's who she's playing yeah the girl from prey who what are the real quickly are those uh the twins that uh one of them Sokka, um or however you pronounce it one of them is played by uh, Aubrey Plaza. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's in Legend of Korra. We will definitely get to... I did not forget them. No, was, wait. It's in the regular show, right? No, no those, Legend those of Korra. I uh, do. Legend of Korra was a f***ing blur for me. That was no, I get it. For a lot of, for a lot of people, there, there were a lot of blurs in the show. But They're also in the worst season of that show. So That was season two, uh, right? Yeah, yeah season okay. two well, was a bit of a slog. We'll 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 get into it, but there the, before we go into the Legend of Korra, there are there's like two things I want to cover real quick. I I don't know if you guys remember any of this, but when I was rewatching it, I thought it was kind of funny how when Aang was on the uh the tur- the lion turtles back, you know the one where it was like the giant island he was floating on before the big fight. He was talking to his past avatar, so he talked to Avatar Roku, and he was like, "What should I do?" And he was like, "Look, you got to be decisive. You got to make the decisions that's necessary." at the actions at hand. And then he's like, that's not good. So then he talks to the next one, which is Avatar Kyoshi, who is a dude, badass Avatar. I think she was like 6'6 or something. She was huge, dude. So she had the greatest advice of all time, which was kill that bitch. Do what you got to do. Like solid advice. The other one was like, be decisive. The other one's like, go for the throat. It's a direct quote. So yeah, it's, I'm paraphrasing. And then the other ones were like, Make up your choice. Like, do what you gotta do. But I think it's funny how with her, she was like, right here, you're done. Like, I like how every single one of them gave him different advice. And Aang is like, could y'all just like decide on one? I'm yeah. a little, could you just give me like what? Like, <laughs> dude, Kyoshi was always going for the throat. She was a, she was a fighter, dude. That's why I liked her. She was, she was rad. Earth Kingdom I like your style. Yes. Then Aang bitched out. Okay, well, so and then, uh, before we go on, I like how this show is doing comic books as well as to expand their story. I don't know if you guys have read any of them or knew about. Them, I but... bought the Cora ones. <laughs> I, I uh, back in Jersey, I have uh, the Art of Avatar. Um, oh. Like I have quite a few of them, um, but they they there was a lot of them, so I couldn't buy all of them without being completely broke. But uh, I didn't yeah. buy those. But I meant like for for Avatar: The Last Airbender, they no, actually yeah, have made comic book series. series. That yeah. answers un- that like that answers the unanswered questions of the show. So more about like what happened to Zuko's mom. mom. Yeah, yeah. It's like they they have one for for Azula and her arc, but then also at the same time for their mom, kind of going. What to did experience. happen to her? I never read it. I never wanted to find out. I wanted to actually buy the book and read it myself. I do. I think it's like the first episode of Korra that like, uh, God, I can't remember the the Tenzin's kid. Uh oh uh hold up hold up hold up I got it I got it uh Tez, hold up. uh Genora yeah 
she like runs up to Katara and she's like, I just finished reading about all your exploits. What happened to Zuko's mom? Yeah. And then and then Katara's like, hmm, good question. And then she like turns around and runs away or something like that. But yeah, like, it's like can we ever know? Hilarious. I, I think we'll I, I think it does answer it in, in um <clears throat> Yeah, it does answer it in the comics, but and I really it, hope it, so. I do love whenever like creators like directly acknowledge like a mystery in the fan base and they're like yeah yeah and and and, yeah sorry go on go on no i was just saying that's cool like i was just letting cameron know that that was cool that's i I like creators being tongue-in-cheek yeah like like, like little writer inside hint wink wink nudge nudge get it you know i I get you Uh, oh I keep saying this every time before we transition. Last thing before we transition. Uh, for a season four, there was rumor for a season four, as you guys know. But uh, so I think it was a creator, DeMartino and Kion Tinzo. I'm really bad with names. Decided to early on limit the series in only three seasons. While Kenzianto reportedly claims that his ways of the plan was to tell the stories a little differently. Uh, according to ahaz i think it's like a writer something like that the writers briefly considered doing a fourth season of avatar that would have provided a redemption story for azula which is then kind of what her comic book became but uh is i'm just gonna call him e because i think i'm saying that right e claims that the idea was scrapped as the m night Shyamalan movie moved forward ironically Shyamalan was apparently in favor of a fourth season while the creators pushed for the live action movie to be made big mistake that was and their defense though like M. Night, he was in the beginning of his career, like, you know, hitting super highs. Yeah. And then, you got unbreakable. Towards, like, you know, you got Unbreakable, you got Signs, Sign, you know, you got like Six quite Sense. a few. Was Six Sense Six Sense was his debut. Yeah. I don't blame them, but also, like, the- any of his movies, they don't really scream like Avatar. Yeah. You know, they scream like. Everyone just yeah, screams like, huh? Like, you walk away from, I guess, like, it kind of works, but, like, you know, every one of his movies, you walk away and you're confused. And with Avatar, his movie, same thing. Quick kind question. Of. This is going to be so off topic. Outside of Avatar, on three, least favorite M. Night Shyamalan movies. Wait, hold on. Hold on. On three. One, two, three. Old. Old. Earth. After Earth was him? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I take it back. It's it's definitely After Earth. Sorry, it's After Earth. Dude, I'd rather watch After Earth. Than Old? Old is f***ing awful. I thought Old was at least a little interesting. It was After spooky. Earth is like... a- and After Earth, I'm laughing because Jaden Smith is not a good actor. It's a good so drunk watch. <laughs> it, it's just like, it's a movie I can put on and watch with a friend and just like, we just roast the movie. With Old, it's just terrible dialogue horrible like nothing f- makes sense and i can't say that on your podcast but it gets weird i oh, will say did you talk about the, the 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 kids yeah okay that's what i was thinking like that was just weird yeah i will say he does have a worse movie than after earth technically but mm. i love that movie and i think it's fantastic it's not the village is it no it's the happening it's oh. so funny <laughs> It is one of the funniest movies ever. What's happening? What's happening? What's going on right away? Sorry. It's the trees. It's... <laughs> and I can't uh, believe at the ending of... Spoilers. I don't give a crap. This movie sucks. Never watched this. I can't believe at the end of the movie, he goes, I guess it was over before it ever began. Or something like that. Like, at the very end, they get to <laughs> where they have Wahlberg to go. Wahlberg is amazing. His Wahlberg. Collins Wahlberg is insane. Because you know why? It seeps into every impression. He did a Martin Scorsese. I have a clip of it on TikTok. Where he's like, where's the... Where's the protagonist? Where's the antagonist? Where's the drama? But he, he did another impression, like, the other night. We were we were, we were were out somewhere. And he goes, like... He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm Rocky Balboa. Something like that. Like, it seeps into everything, and I love it. I mean, man, this I, I is was drunk for that one. Never mind. Super off topic of our original last Airbender, but uh, that's how we roll here, Tuvi. I, I I did this play when I was in high school where I had to do this New York accent. Uh, shout out, uh, guys and dolls. Um, and now whenever like for like a solid three years after i don't know if it still happens when whenever i get like 
really impassioned or I start talking a lot, like really fast, uh, it, it it comes out. Yeah. And it's weird. And people are like, what the f is happening to your voice? I know exactly what you're talking about. What do you get? Yeah. It's hard to explain, but like primarily, like predominantly, a, like a majority of my family are New Yorkers. So like it does come out like every now and then when I really get pissed off, like not in this one, like it's just it's playful pissed off. I'm not being serious. But when I'm really f upset, like I turn into a New York cabbie. You do. You 100 percent do. Yeah. You 1000 percent do. And I and every My time I do it, I always have to like take a do it. I have to do a double take. And, like. Yeah, and then you have to remember that my a lot of my family are New Yorkers. No, I get it. I I get that. Yeah, yeah. I, I get. My you. dad's from Kentucky, and like whenever we spend more than a week there, I can hear the twang coming out in his voice. Oh man, I love it. Accents, they're a yeah. funny thing. With the with the new movie coming out, animated movie coming out, October tenth, twenty twenty five. Rock on, let's go. And then we also have the actual live action series coming out February twenty second this year. So that's about wait, hold wait. I was waiting for you to like clarify. There's an animated Avatar movie coming out uh, from the Adult Gang, Ooh. as they say. I think it's about Aang. It's it's the whole entire group. The everything. Avatar crew. Is it like a continuation off of like the end of season three? I think a they're bit adult. of both. It's like after that, before Korra, because they oh. they were establishing the New Republic city. And are they like? Is it? Is he going to be like the older Ang that we saw in Flashes and Korra? Just a oh. little younger. Just That's a the little show younger. I wanted to watch. Yeah, just a little younger. So we're going <laughs> to get a whole movie about sucks that. Sucks that it took this long. Well, I you know, and then we also have like I said, the live action series coming out. I'm excited for it. Cameron, as always, is hesitant, pessimistic. I can not give less of a fuck about that show. <laughs> Whoa! I was expecting Cameron to say this, but Colin. You already know my feelings, dude. I didn't know your feelings. We never talked about this. Yeah. Oh, do I have to read the f receipts from yesterday about how to train your dragon? Oh. Oh. <laughs> God. Like, a f I hate that this shit, This is different. Dude. This is different. This is kind of... Not this is different. All right. I don't care. I prefer it to be animated because it's also more charming. All right. All right. I'm not gonna. I'm Animation not gonna has that. that like charming Pixar, like into like you know it it it's nice, and you get away with so much more. You know, like with animation, okay. it's like you can have a lower budget but get away with so much more than actually having. Ridiculous. Absolutely. Okay, I'll, I'll 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 give you that. That that actually does make sense. Transitioning over to the Legend of Korra. Seventy years after the last Airbender, this one ended. That one's ended. This one started. I like one thing that they combined a little bit of their two D with some CG stuff. Even though it stands out like a sore thumb, it was pretty cool. Everything. It was alright. It, it was a time. Yeah, it was definitely when it was it was it was doing that. But Cameron was talking about this a little bit. You said your favorite was was who again in the show, Cameron? Uh, in that. Yeah. I really like Bolin. Dude, Bolin, my guy. That's my guy. Yeah. Especially because, like, so the guy who plays Bolin, he's in, like, everything. Like, he's in The Boys. He was in The Wolf of Wall Street. He was in Babylon. Like, he was. He was. Yeah. But, like, I, I like she seeing him show up and things because, like, you see him and you know that Bolin is, like, this super jacked, like, movie star guy. And then you look at him and he's like, that's just, like, he, he could be an accountant. And like I wouldn't anyway, but I really yes. like the win. Um, I oh, really you were talking about Eska, by the way. That's Aubrey Paz's <laughs> character. I do think Eska is very funny. She was awesome. Um, yeah, she's very charming. And I do think Zaheer is the best villain out of both shows. Yeah, he was pretty rad. That was the guy that like pretended to be an air nomad, Colin, and then snuck into Air, air Temple Island. But I like. Probably... I probably saw that. I I re I fast forwarded quite a bit. The bell, the ball. He's guy. the dude who killed the Earth Queen by taking all the wind out of her like, lung, which is like her. crazy. I'll tell you this real quickly. I'm gonna I'm gonna rag on Cora only because I was just bored and I didn't care. All right, but like it's no it's no offense to the show or anything like that. There are, there is quite a bit of stupid shit, but the one important thing I will say, and just to add on to Cameron's earlier point. Is not only is the steampunk aesthetic f baller, but the animation quality has gotten so much better. 
I mean, it, yeah. It is fluid. It came like, out like five, six years after the actual show, didn't it? It uh, quite a lot of time passed, I'll say like a few years. Yeah, hold on. Uh it was I think hold on. It's, it's a it was race. about no, it was four years. Yeah, four 2008, years. July, July 19, 2008 was the last episode, and then 2012 was the first episode. So four years. Y'all, y'all remember the days where, uh, you know, they didn't have, like, social medias or anything. You actually had to go to the website and type in thelegendofcora.com or whatever, and it would take you to the, yeah. yeah. Well, because it didn't air season three or four on Nick. Where did it air? Online. No. Wait, wait what do you mean? Season three and season four of Legend of Korra did not make it on air it was air oh air. yeah dude there was a there was... It, it, it wasn't popular <laughs> oh it was it definitely did not su- 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 uh, succeed in popularity at the time but looking back on it, it's pretty good pretty 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 cool, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah but yeah, i don't know why i feel like people when they saw a female avatar shocker people just turned it away yeah, I w- I didn't have a problem with that. I because I was excited. I mean, I wanted to see Ang, but I was also kind of holding out hope that I would like Cora, and she's very likable in yeah. some cases. Oh yeah, but also like, I'll be honest, I fucking hate love stories. I really hate the love triangle shit that was going on in the first season throughout the entire show it, it it dragged it down it made it weird it just didn't it, it did not gel with me and that crybaby bitch who was holding the flowers and his best friend or boyfriend or whatever was being kissed by Cora and he's just like <laughs> and even Bolin? as like, it, that's Bolin I don't give my a guy fuck. shut I don't, up man nah he's a crybaby bitch I will say the uh, bending sport thing that they do. Pro bending so, arena. Oh, that was sick. a cool idea. That was See, that's also like the world building that I really <laughs> loved as well as like, you know, what are like, what is their entertainment or sports, you know? And like, you know, clearly like they would have had like games like that. I would have loved to have been in the writer's room as well and just seen them like brainstorm like the rules of that game and how they were building it. It's yeah, those small things i really appreciate that's really cool and I, I i agree i feel like expanding more on that lore would be kind of cool to see but pro bending will look so rad looks so good dude i want to play give me, say, let me in the arena i don't have yeah. any problems i just want to get knocked off all right well so there's there's you gotta have i think it was was it you could have all four no it was only just the three right they air. didn't have air. You couldn't use air because, like, at the beginning of the show, there weren't like there tens like, of family was like the last Airbenders, that's and right. then in season three, there was like the miracle like because research the, Airbenders because of the uh, convergence or something like the, that. The season two happened. <laughs> like, season two is yeah. Like, so let, let's let's hop on that because Colin, you made a really good point about pro bending. It's a really good thing kind of forgot about pro betting that's a good call so yeah season two was i wouldn't say it was awful it was just like kind of predictable low and doesn't have enough going on no because i feel like i feel like and they knew that and and when they when they stretched it out like it was like 13 episodes or something it was the longest of the whole show There's something like that but it does have the best episode of the entire show in that season which i do think is interesting is that uh, Avatar Wong. I was gonna say it's the one episode because that's a real Avatar Wong, who, who was voiced by uh, Stephen Yun, by the way. Yep. Oh yeah. Awesome. I, like I really that. like that episode. I think it's sick as hell. I think the animation is super cool. And I think the story art. is also rad. I like how the art in that episode was very inspired by like the old paintings that they have in 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 that yep. culture. Yeah, it was super cool to see that that two it was it was two D kind of yep. right. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, very very cool. But let's go back to Zaheer real quick. So the four main villains of the entire show was Zaheer, Unalak, Kuvara, and Aman. And in that order are the list of how cool they were. From least to most? From most to least. You didn't Unalak. like Aman? Aman was sick as hell. Dude, in order of how crazy they were, Aman is sick. 
I'm not saying it's like there's only four, so you're gonna have only one through four. Amon was cool, voiced by Stephen Blum. Gotta have that. I love that. But like, what if I thought he was really better than uh, Unalak. Unalak was boring as hell. Unalak took her chi, bro. Yeah, but he was a boring character. I'm not saying I'm not saying character development. I'm just talking about the entire like villain esque thing. Like villain. I don't understand your criteria. It's never, and you never will. Well, you guys settled this. My horse is out. Let you guys do this. I have my coffee in my mouth, man. You Bam. suck, man. I have my coffee. Killed him. You killed him. I mess up on one <laughs> phrase, okay? All right. The here was great. The what were they called? What was the bat? What were those? What was that group called? Not the Equalists. Oh, they were the Equalists, weren't they? Yeah. No, that's a Mon's group. That was okay. And then what were they? I don't know. They were like the ones that like they were mean. Like, they wanted a new world order. They were yeah. the governments. Bad. The bad guys. Yes. Yes, you're right, God. But you're right. Though they had the they had the water chick with no arms who had the really water, cool noodle water arms. arms from Suicide Squad. Huh? <laughs> Enchantress, yes. Absolutely. And then we had the lava guy. And um Oh, that chick that did the 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 exp the, that did the combustion bending. She had the combustion thing. She had the thing on her hmm. on her face. Oh yeah. Dude, that she had the most metal death ever. Uh what was her name? Uh I know her name, I know her name, I know her name. I don't it's know. not Opal. She, she ain't got a head no more, that's for sure. Suyin. Suyin. I think that's what it was. Uh, Sue. I was pretty sure she didn't have like any lines either, right? No, Sue Yin was the was the chief of police. Oh no, oh. sorry, that's Lynn. Sorry, that's Lynn. That's Lynn Bayfong. Yeah, that's Lynn. Sue Yin was her sister. Lynn, yeah, she freaking metal bends that freaking thing and collapses her face right as she goes. Yeah. God, that was so metal. That was so sick. That's a harsh way to go, dude. Dude, that's yeah. <laughs> that's like that's kind of rad. I mean, not that she died, but it was like that's a sick way to go. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm surprised they cleared that, but I guess if it was on the internet, you know. Yeah. Did we ever explain? True. What's that? Did we ever explain why it was on the internet? It wasn't getting good enough ratings on Nick, but the creators still wanted to keep making it. So. Okay. Well. Did you it guys ever was... watch it on there? Was that? Did you watch it on the website? No, I, I, I watched the show when it hit Netflix and then okay. and I bought the show on I, I, I have both Cora and Avatar. Wait, hold on. Cameron. I wanna see uh, if we have the same ones. Like do you do you have this? Like no, these? no. Or I think they have like the same uh art. But yeah. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a cool. I don't show. Don't think it I really got the Blu-ray. I think I got the DVD just because that's what my store had. Dude, I really kind of hope to do a 4K remaster of the show. That'd be kind of cool. No, be, no, be. Would that like? Would there be like a difference in quality? Brighter like, colors. I guess. I mean, I just kind of like that scene with the the the, the dragon dance would be kind of cool to see in like really nice definition. Okay. All right, that's just me. Um, no, no, no. I wasn't judging you. It's just because I like the like with animation. I don't know if there is a difference with like 4K or anything like that. I know that sounded shitty, and I've been bragging no, on this. No, no. It's like I saw a thing with like with like Spider Man in the Spider Verse, like like HD and 4K. It was a solid, brighter color, like definition. Yeah, but it's also not 2D drawn. You know. That's true. Okay, that's actually pretty fair. Maybe it's like just brighter colors, like more like solid blues and oranges. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I, I got you off topic. No, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, and then one kind of cool thing about the show was the big representation in the show, whether it be, you know, with like blind or LGBTQ plus characters, because the biggest one I think was at the time, I think it was like the it was the first one of the show that we saw publicly was Korra. Kind of the yeah. end, her and Asami. Her and Asami. But it was mainly in the comics they explored that relationship. Yeah, which is cool. And then I also didn't know that Kyoshi was the was like one of the first avatars to, and then it was then later followed by Avatar Korra. Like now, correct me as, if I'm as wrong. As by, 
sorry. Let's go gay people. Wrong, but like, yeah. so the the chick that um Cora ends up with in the comics wasn't the backlash not really necessarily that and I could be wrong as well because it was secondhand information and and again like towards like the end of the binge I was really like just out of it I just was avatar out and I just had to rush and do my homework the best I could um wasn't it like like it just like it it just like came out of nowhere because I don't know if like you know she it just like it was abrupt you know what I'm saying I think like them actually saying they would do it but like the entire season they had been like kind of flirty yeah. but but it was very subtle flirts they really weren't like it wasn't like in your face open. it was just yeah. like a oh okay cool yeah like it, like if you were paying attention you'd catch it but if you didn't I guess it could come as a shock yeah like they yeah. weren't like it's not that they were sorry trying to force it in everyone's face it was just like something that they i guess they were trying to build up to yeah i don't know i don't know i don't know i i never i never caught it until much later because i know uh, that was like a big thing a big big thing why like people really hated cora i don't know why it's not it doesn't change anything internet dude it's that like we live in we live in a different like honestly it's this simple we live in a different time right now where everybody is super hypersensitive and even the people that hate sensitivity be sensitive about like shit that just doesn't matter on both sides, everyone's going to have something to bitch about. And if you're gay, straight, whatever, somebody's going to complain about it. I say we should we, we should have less people in the world. Um, and I will do the first step and kill myself. Maybe not that, Cameron. Maybe Everybody maybe. lead my example. Let's, I let's make you. Whoa. Hell yeah. <laughs> Where'd you pull that from? Whoa. Oh no! It's just fiddling with the pocket. Oh my gosh! Pocket. For me, it came out of solid nowhere. Like it came yeah. off screen. That was okay. All right. Well, that have to wrap up season three, episode one. Solid comeback, guys. Well, welcome back to the team. Next week, we are going to be doing our another. We're going to be doing another uh, uh, director rewatch. We're going to do another director breakdown. Can anyone possibly, possibly guess what the next director is? Lars von Trier. Lars von Trier. Lars von Trier. That's Cameron's guess. Colin, you wanna you wanna give another guess? Sam Raimi. Close. No. Stanley Kubrick. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Yeah. What? You don't like the bricks? I I do. But I'm about to be bricked like, up this week, like, man. His, his movies are so slow, and I'm not in the right. Like I love slow movies, but right now I'm not in that mood. You know what I'm saying? All right, then you wanna do a different one? No, dude. We'll do it. Wait, deal with it. I'm not. I'm not gonna like change no, no, the no. director because I'm going through withdrawal. I can handle it. I've seen The Shining before. I can watch it again. It's just I don't want to watch 2001, but I can deal with it. Well, then you you don't have to watch all of them. Just get what you can. I know, but I it it, it I got to do my homework. Tom Cruise fuck. Huh? What's up? Watch Tom Cruise. Fuck. Watch some Eyes Wide Shut. All right, Stanley Kubrick. That's a good deal. God, Kubrick, yeah. what a man. About to be bricked up for two reasons. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. All right. Well, if you guys enjoyed the episode, be sure to like, subscribe, check us out on all the platforms. You guys can see down below in the description. Check us out on Letterboxd, Instagram, and TikTok. In the description below is also going to be a, a podcast that's called Avatar Braving the Elements. It's actually really, really cool. If you didn't get maybe what you guys were wanting in this episode, the voice of Cora, which is uh, Janet Varney, and then Dante Basco break down actually every single episode leading from Avatar to the last episode of Korra. They go through everything. They've had some, the writers on there. They've had some actors on there. So it's actually, it's like that one podcast with uh, the two people from the office. I can't remember their name. I would, I would actually give that a wa uh, listen and it's cool. appreciate the show a little bit more. Yeah. It's actually really, really fun. I liked it a lot. I, I missed a lot of episodes, but it's a lot of fun. Go check it out and we'll see you guys next time.